hello everyone madison here and welcome back to my channel so today's video ah, you guys know what it is it is section three of the mplq manual of generation nine um again like i said in the first one and the second one um my manual will be very different to yours if we're different generations and if the manual's different generations and the, if they're if say for example if your generation number is very different to my generation number but it says something in your manual that doesn't say anything in mine i can't help you with that and um yeah because i'll be completely useless with it but I can try and work it out for you if I can anyway. So, um, and also the flashing lights in the background, that's my Christmas tree. And why my camera's lifted, excuse me, um, why my camera's lifted is I've got a new ring light, new purchase, yes, hello. Um, so I have no lights on in my room apart, apart from the Christmas tree lights and the reason why when my mirror goes that colour that's from our kitchen because we have a glass door and my mum's in the kitchen so classic. Um, it's just I so the pure white light is just from my ring light so yeah hopefully I can work out how to use it and get lighting properly and sort it out because at the moment I look I probably look atrocious but we move so let's get into the video um so like I said this is section three and it's about cardiopulmonary resuscitation AED and first aid training yeah so element one Again, there's three elements. Element one is cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. Element two is automated external defibrillator, AED. And element three is about first aid. So, um, to every lifeguard that watches my YouTube videos, I am very sorry if I pronounce any words incorrectly and um don't hate on me <laughs> let's get going so basically um at the start of every section you get a what will we cover section paragraph um in this one section um it will go through the basic understanding of how the body works and identify, uh, identifying like potential problems, dealing with de developing emergencies, taking appropriate action and handling difficult situations that may occur when carrying out CPR. So there's priorities of a of casualty management. So um, that will go through um your initial concerns and the abc of survival the abc of survival is so a is airways b is breathing and c is circulation so a well airways is you have to make sure that the casualties airways are always open to help them breathe I'm sure you could all work that out yourself. B is for breathing. You look, you listen and you feel for their breathing just to make sure what it sounds like. Does it f sound like um, everyday breathing or fast or slow or shortness or longness, stuff like that. And C is for, again, circulation. 
Start with chest compressions to get the blood flowing back on the body as it once was. And un in priorities of casualty management comes priorities when you're treating a casualty management. So like a little subtitle. And your main priorities are emergency CPR, management of choking, control of life-threatening bleeding, care of the unconscious breathing casualty treatment for shock and your medical your medical attention towards them and um then it goes through the chain of survival so that goes through four steps so early recognition early cpr early defibrillation and for post-resuscitation care and then it explains them um also if people send in some questions for me about the sections um i can go through the sections and not not read them out like word for word but Take it, change it up into short little summaries of each like little heading, and then make it into a video because then that way it'd be just shorter for you guys to watch. Um. Okay, moving on. Another thing you would need to know is turning a casualty onto the back. So, like. There will be times when you have to, when one person does an in-water rescue. So how we done it in training, um, one person does, does a rescue of the casualty, takes the casualty over to the side. Other Two other people lift that casualty out, turn the casualty round, so they're on their front with their arms up straight like that. And the... Um, person who re um se rescued the casualty and took the casualty to the side then does the turn the casualty onto the back and for ex it will also go through management managing regurgitation of stomach contents and they also give you um diagrams And they go through the recovery position. And for those who have done, um, have experienced an MPLQ training or is a lifeguard, they'll know this is where breathing and airways come comes into it. That that's how we done it at um, my MPLQ training. Um, but obviously we didn't um what didn't we do i don't know what we didn't do but you know we move um it again it gives diagrams also i cannot pronounce that it's the wrong way around for you guys but you know um basically this word is like suffocation i can't pronounce the word um so a cause for this could be the tongue blocking the airway of an unconscious casualty a foreign object stuck in the throat someone strangling them drowning the mouth uh, the mouth and nose being accidentally or deliberately covered. Suffocation. No, there's no diagrams. Cardiac arrest. Um, it also goes through cardiac arrest. And... That's, I'll cover that page part. That's the paragraph, no diagrams, nothing. Noth nothing. 
like, again, if someone DMs me saying, can you go through section three, like, in details, I'll go through it all, like, all of it, cardiac arrest, everything. Then it goes through principles of airway management. Um, it's that's where um like airways and breathing come in because if if you do the head tilt chin head tilt chin lift, so they put their hand there, fingers there, and you go like that. Um. Just so then your, because your tongue's blocking your airway a little bit. Well, I say that, but if you do that, then your tongue moves out from your airway. I know that because I was I've been staring at those diagrams to help me. Don't know if you could tell me, tell it when I was constantly looking down. Then it goes through CPR diagrams with descriptions. And then it goes on to this page as well. And then it does the same for a child and infant. So that's the adult one still. It's over three pages. Then the child and infant, brackets, baby, CPR. It just describes and has diagrams of both of them. Um, it goes through what would happen if you have more than one rescuer and CPR. Then it goes through the CPR flow chart. I'll read the top because there's not many. There's not much to go through. So, um, that's the flow chart. Um... So unresponsive and not being a not breathing normally. Call nine 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 and ask for an ambulance. Then, if drowning, child or infant give five rescue be breaths. Then thirty chest compressions, two rescue breaths. Then continue CPR thirty to two. So thirty chest compressions, two rescue breaths. As soon as the um, AED arrives. You switch it on and you follow the instructions. Um, if a casualty, it, it it goes through when like casualties drown and their CPR. Um, yeah. There's one one diagram, one picture. And then the rest is just like detailed. For me, I find section three the hardest. To, like, you know, oh my god, hello. Um, I find section three the hardest because I feel I feel like to me it's the longest when it probably isn't. But it's probably the same length as section one, but I find section one easier than section three. I find section two so easy uh, be because it's short. I don't have to pick up much information for that. Like I can pick up information. It's just something about section three that won't sit properly. But anyway, we shall get going and finish this. We're still on el element one and I've got to do element two and three. And yeah, it also goes through like rescue breathing in the water and recovery in the water. Again, has diagrams on how to do it. Um, it also goes through CPR using a pocket mask. So that's literally like a little mask that covers your nose, the casualties, nose and mouth with the little spelt thingy. And then, um, Lifeguard bows into that. Um, it goes through problems with CPR, such as 
air in the stomach, broken ribs. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that word. Um, regurgitation of stomach contents. Chest does not rise. Fluid in the airways. CPR in confined spaces. And that's about it. It goes on about mouth to nose ventilation. Choking as well. It goes through choking as well. And under choking, it... There's signs and symptoms of choking. So the casualty may not have been seen to be eaten. A child may have be, been seen putting an object into his mouth. A casualty who is choking often grips his throat with one or both hands. With a mild airway obstruction, the casualty would be able to speak, and co speak, cough and breathe, but will be distressed. If the airway is completely obstructed, which is a severe obstruction, the casualty will be unable to speak, have a weakening cough, will be struggle, struggling or unable to breathe. The face may become blue and congested and the veins will stand out in the neck and the casualty may be unconscious because of this. Then there's a choking flow chart. Which is literally I've um, just explained, but for a mild airway obstruction with an effective cough, you encourage coughing until the obstruct obstruction is sorted. Um, severe airway obstructions with an ineffective cough. You continuously, continuously up to five back bows and up to five abdom abdominal thrusts. And um, if if they are unconscious, you start CPR. Um, basically, with abdominal thrusts, it may be very dangerous for infants. So for infants, you give them five chest thrusts. Um, it, with that being said, it goes through a treatment for adults, which is, covers a little bit in the flow chart. And then it goes through treatment for um, infants and children, which again, we, I just mentioned. Um, it goes through a obese or pregnant casualties when they're choking, but yeah, and then it goes through CPR and injury to the spine, and if you're dealing with a casualty that has a spinal injury, you have to take particularly good care when for the maintenance main, to maintain alignment of the head neck and chest and then with under the cpr and injury to the spine section it goes through airway managing airway management and cpr and managing regurgitation of stomach contents and then you get the revision you get the revision section element 2 which is automated external defibrillators AED and basically it goes over it, so every section you get a what we will cover i probably said I probably said that every element sorry about what we'll cover and basically it's about AEDs and cardiac arrests you get a chart don't know what it's for because I haven't read it in like two years well I've been looking over it but you know so in this section it goes through the guidelines of an use it goes through the guidelines for use of an AED 
then so like the steps are as soon as the AED arrives then it goes through the steps then if a shock is indicated goes to what you should do if no shock is indicated then the steps continue to follow the AED prompts until then it it sort of is like a heading with bullet points heading bullet points type of thing a bit like that yeah goes through the diagrams as well then it goes through the placements of the AED pads it's very so if you do AED pads for an adult it's very different for infants and children as well Use it, it goes through using an AED in a swimming pool environment and if the casualty is wet. I'll let you all finish having your moment. Okay, um, then it goes through use of oxygen, then minimising interruptions in chest compressions, then goes through inf that for infants and children as well then it goes through about what to store with an AED so that a small towel or fl face flannel a razor pocket mask pocket masks protective gloves scissors and suitable to cut through suitable scissors that are suitable to cut through clothing um some operators may include may choose to include spare batteries for it spare pads and patriotic pads i could say that then it goes through an aed flow chart then revision section that element is quite short but for me they're quite detailed as well so we're on element three, which is first aid. And the first thing that I got when I turned over was this big green box, which is about the first aid survey. Um, and then again, it would go over what you would cover and all that. Then it then it explains about the priorities of first aid then it will go over nop relevant content first aid supplies and training and it will give you this content then it will go through the contents of a first aid box we all i'm hoping everyone knows what a first aid box looks like one of these if you don't know or just need a mind vigil it will go over hygiene procedures needles and sharps it will also go through history symptoms and signs applying first aid treatment and then it will um so it's pr pretty self-explanatory you need to know someone's history you like have they had a cardiac arrest before have they had this what illnesses what medication have they been on so you can work around it as well so the symptoms and the signs so like what symptoms have they been having have they been having nosebleeds have they been having headaches um are there any signs and then you again you apply the first aid around of the things based off what the casualty has told you and then again it explains it all in detail then it goes through taking emergency action then seeking emergency help then casualty management and then in casualty management it goes through primary and secondary survey so with primary sur surgery it goes through like yourself so danger response airway breathing and circulation well not just yourself but 
yourself and the casualty in the moment as you look at them. So with the danger, is there any danger to yourself or the casualty? Response, does the casualty respond? Airway, is the casualty's airway open and cleared? Breathing, is the casualty breathing normally? I explained that earlier on into the video. Circulation, is there any severe bleeding? Again, I explained that further on in, like, earlier on in the video. Secondary survey, so um, that's if, like, that's when you've got to put your gloves on and touch the casualty. You can't do that whilst this virus is going around, so that's probably why they're not doing any NPLQ courses at the moment. Don't worry, it is Diet Coke. And then it goes through like the unconscious casualties. So with an unconscious casualty, they will be unable to tell you any of their symptoms and unable to do anything really. Then it goes through a heart attack. It goes through the symptoms, goes through the signs and it goes through the treatment. And the HSE first aid at work for regulation state. Then the same with shock. It goes through shock. So that's symptoms, sign and treatment. Same with anaphylaxic shock, I think. Or allergies. No, it's about allergies. Never mind. And um, it would go through breathing problems. So the main one is asthma, having an asthma attack. That's what it says here anyway. Again, symptoms and signs, signs, treatment. Then with the al allergic one, it goes through the triggers, signs and symptoms, other symptoms. So... Um, with the triggers of it, it's foods such as nut, milk, fish, shellfish, and eggs. Medicines, so like general anaesthetic and aspirin. Insect stings, in particular wasps and bees, as they're the most common. And latex, that's the type of rubber found in rubber gloves. It also then goes through treatment, medication for like the th parts you need to know. This is my favourite part. The dressings and bandages. And then it goes about like the different bleedings of it and how you cover up bleeding, external bleeding, internal bleeding, varicose vein bleeding. Um, it goes through like amputations, bleeding from the nose and all that. It also goes through splinters, burns and scalds. And electric shock. And fractures and slings and sprains and strains and dislocations and cramp. Um, it also goes through like head injuries. So con concussion and compression. Yeah. Um, it's about where, so concussion is where the, a casualty may have an alternate, al they may have a different level of consciousness, be disorientated and be confused, and the lack of ability to remember or briefly go unconscious after another blow or injury to the head. A compression is a potentially fatal condition where there is pressure to the brain from either a, from either a traumatic head injury, which is could result as a skull fracture or bleeding in the brain goes through the symptoms signs and treatment and with 
the um, chest injury. It goes through penetrating chest injury. Um, then again, symptoms, signs, and treatment. And so therefore it goes through flare chest. Well, it's where the ribs have been fractured in several places. Um, it goes through symptoms, signs and treatment. It goes through eye injuries. Again, symptoms, signs and treatment. Then it goes through like dental care. You know, you know the three words I'm going to say. It goes through symptoms, signs and treatment. Then it goes through fainting. So, like, that could be from injury, illness, fatigue, long periods in the hot and stuffy atmosphere, and long periods of standing still. Then it goes through symptoms, signs, and treatment. Then it goes through stroke. Then it goes through with stroke. Again, symptoms, signs, and treatment. With poisoning, so like drug, alcohol, or chemicals and gases, goes through drug abuse, alcohol abuse, releasing of chemicals or gases. Then again, symptoms, signs, and treatment. Then it explains more about gas or chemical leak, closed spaces, and sources of information. It also explains about insect bites and stings. We've already covered it in the allergic reaction part then it's about a diabetic emergency and how to deal with them symptom signs and treatments it goes through for that as well we haven't got much left of section three to do anyway That was a really weird smile. It goes through seizures and epilepsy. So, yeah. Goes through heated and cold injuries. Then explains them. It goes through hypothermia. It goes through secondary surveys and how to perform it correctly. And then it goes through checking the pulse to monitor a casualty and do this. Moving and handling the casualty. It goes through about after the accident or incident. Clean up, fill up, write up. Then you get given one of those. You have to fill it out. So that could, that's the casualty's names. That's your name and that's what happened. And I never actually filled this part out, but I'm sure your manual or your leader might um, help you. Are we only on element two? I don't know. No, never mind. Element three. Must be a typo. Um, because revision questions. Ooh, whoops. Then after the revision questions, don't worry. It's not even. It's not more. It just goes through the glossary of terms and abbreviations. And that's over a couple of pages. And. I am done with making this series. Like, it's been fun. Um, I will uh, I will obviously make videos about like MPLQ and stuff. It's just it would be later on considering I had three continuous videos in a row about MPLQ. So 
Oh, excuse me again. I'm probably going to give it a break for a month or two. Then make more videos about MPLQ. But again, um, if you've got any questions or queries about the MPLQ videos, um, drop me a message on either social media, on any, on or tell me on my app where um, you you would be anonymous. You won't be able. I won't be able to see who sent it. So, and what my teacher always used to tell me: there's no such thing as a stupid question, because if you have a question and you think it's stupid, there's someone else out there in the world that would want to know the same answer to that same question, or has the same question as you do. That, that would have been easier for me to say. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, you guys know what to do anyway. Like, comment, subscribe if you're new. And I'm sure I'll catch you later. Bye!